You ready to get in the Word today? So if you have your Bible, bring it along. If not, your PDA or your, your telephone, get ready to get to the Word. Because when we hear the Word, and then when we see the Word, and then we see God working in our hearts, His very Word, then we can rejoice because God shows Himself strong and brings us out of ourselves by His Word. Amen. The book of James, chapter 1. So we've been doing a series for a period of time called The Truth About, and we've had a small sabbatical. <laughs> Man, so I think they, I went into uh, urgent care on the 20th of October, and we emerged out and then went through our COVID uh, situation and rolled that out. And, and, you know, thank God for God will never leave us nor forsake us. So what I have to share with you is what God really wanted me to give you, and he wants me to give it to you in such a way that you will listen to it and practice it and let it become something new to you. In other words, when we hear the word of God, every time we hear it, something new will be delivered to us by the help of the Holy Spirit if we are hunger and if we thirst after true righteousness. Say amen. All right. Good morning, saints. Welcome to this briefing. Even though... We have a small group today. We'll grow and grow. Some people had previous things they arranged, didn't know when we would be together or when we would not. Thank you for your prayers. So I just want to say this. God made us out of love. He made us for love. And he made us for love's sake. The whole purpose of God creating mankind was to make us in his image after his love likeness and God is love Amen. see we're talking about the kind of love that God only gives us we're not talking about the man kind of love did you know there are four words for love there's eros which means a loving husband and wife situation there's storge everyone say storge, storge. <clears throat> and all that stuff I'm <clears throat> going to have some water Storge is that love and appreciation that grows. Like, say, maybe you have a partnership, a business. In also a marriage, your love can grow. How many know God's love can grow in you? That's the word storge, and it's not in there very much, but it means love that grows in harmony. Okay? Eros, storge, and then phileo. Everyone say phileo. We have a city back east called... <clears throat> the city of brotherly love, brotherly love right? <clears throat> Amen. So, Philio is brotherly love. So, he says, love your brothers, love your sisters, right? Amen. With brotherly love. <clears throat> <clears throat> Sorry about this. That came with the residual plus singing. But the next word is what we are all familiar with. Sometimes it's used a little bit too much. But I think an understanding needs to be brought. You see, during the time that when Jesus walked amongst man, they had no word for his character. They had no word for his ability to relate to others. And he knew that he was love personified, come to the earth. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life verse 17 says for God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world but the world through Christ or through him might be saved Amen. so God sent his son because he knew that we could not follow God on our own he knew that the first covenant, the Old Testament, yeah. had some flaws in it. Yeah. Number one, the flaw, us. Amen. Man could not live up to the standard that God requires of us. For one reason, he gave the Ten Commandments to the Israelites to show them that they cannot be saved just because they're Israelite. Go ahead. They must be saved by putting their faith, like Abraham, yes. into God. <clears throat> because Abraham believed God, it says it was accounted to him or put on his account for righteousness. So the people in the Old Testament didn't have God in them, 
but they, a lot of them look forward to God by faith. Yes. It says Abraham looked for the city that, whose maker and builder was God. And he saw that day. Amen. God promised him. Amen. Abraham was so overwhelmed with God's love and God's care that he was willing to offer his own son as a sacrifice to fulfill whatever God requests. Now that's a love affair with God. So God really wants us and he wants us to know that the gospel is simple, always simple, but yet when we study it, it becomes profound because it has to do with us, with God, walking through life, giving God glory. Can you say amen? Open your Bibles to Ephesians chapter 1, please. We've got our opening text, Ephesians chapter 1, 3 through 6. So God told Linda and I, and we'll, we'll give another introduction when everything next week is working well. God told Linda and I to really stick to the simplicity of the gospel. Now, we hear the word simple, we always think childlike, simple, childlike. Think about us. Doesn't matter how old we are, we're childlike, aren't we? Just go ahead and get out of sorts for a while. <laughs> we get childlike. So in other words, we don't forget who we are, but we realize that we are nobody and can do nothing without God. Once we realize that, we begin to grow in the grace of God. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Look at the phrase. Who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing. Everyone say every. Every. Spiritual blessing. Spiritual blessing. In heavenly places. Now, when you see the phrase heavenly places, it means in the spirit realm. Yes. Okay. Everyone say spirit realm. Spirit realm. Heavenly places is where your spirit uh, in relationship to God dwells. Yes. It's also known as the secret place. Amen. It's a place where you and I walk with God where Satan cannot follow. Amen. Now the devil was thrown out of heaven before Adam and Eve were created. And we find that he was a devil and a tempter. Yes. So he warns us, Paul does, to not be moved from the simplicity of the gospel that's in Christ Jesus to anything else. So we live in a world of distractions. So listen what it says. And has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the spirit realm or in heavenly places in Christ. Just as he chose us in him before the foundation of this age. Amen. You were chosen by God. Now whether or not we follow, it's up to us. Amen. But we were chosen in God to live before him in love. Say amen somebody. And that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Having predestinated us, he has a choice for us to walk, whether we choose it or not, to the adoption of sons by Jesus Christ himself, according to the good pleasure. You see, God has good pleasure in you. Yes. According to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace, by which we, he made us accepted. Say, I'm accepted. In Jesus. <clears throat> he said, made us accepted in the beloved. Amen. So, now, let's look at a couple of points. Number one, once we surrender to Jesus Christ, did you know at one time, you were in opposition to God? Matthew chapter 5 says, agree with your adversary while you're on the way with him. Lest any time he turn you over to the officer and the officer turns you over to the judge... And then the judge cast you into prison. I tell you, none of you shall get out of prison until you've paid the whole debt. Amen. And you go, what does that mean? Well, see, while we were sinners in Adam, before we were saved, our life was in opposition to God, whether we knew it or not. And the Bible says a smart person will make peace with the one who's in charge, God. And once we surrender to God, see, before we knew Jesus, before we met God, we were enemies of the gospel, children of wrath. But when we met God, God accepted us in him. 
and changed our nature. <coughs> Excuse my cough in there. And altered the very being that we are. And so for a believer, we are now a child of God, yes. no longer in opposition to God. Now the problem lies in that we have one thing that God has to change in order for us to be complete. What is the one thing in your life that you have that you need to constantly present before God so God can get and mellow and marinate so it doesn't get in the way? And that would be our what? Our flesh. flesh. Amen. That would be our flesh and part of an unrenewed mind. So while we were without God in the world, we were in adversity to God. But we surrendered. God, I'm sorry, I surrender. God then comes and he breathes his life back into our spirit and takes out the Adamic or the cursed nature of the enemy out of our spirit realm. Go ahead. And he, he, he just removes it and then places his spirit of God yes. right on the inside of our spirit. Mm -hmm. So the Bible says, if any man be in Christ, that's you. He is a new creation. All yes. things have passed away. He's talking about in your spirit yes. and in your past. God says, I have forgiven you. Yes. And all things become new. Now, yes. the key is, how does all things become new? Because we look at life through the perspective of the new creature. Yes. The new born again believer. We're looking at life through the born again believer. Yes. And not through our old man. Amen. Our old man has opinions, often judgments, often things that sometimes we wish we wouldn't convey. Amen. Oftentimes when you see somebody that you love and they look like they've gained weight, first thought your mind says is, oh, they're gaining weight. You see, that's the carnal nature. But thank God we're not of the carnal nature any longer. But if the spirit... Why? Because God has come to live in our hearts. Yes. All right. So we got that point, right? Yes. So let me say it. So once we become surrendered to Christ, yes. the love of God is then poured into our hearts by the Holy Spirit. All evil is removed. Yes. And our spirit man with God inside becomes a new living being seeking and desiring to fulfill the Father's call. Can you say amen? Secondly, God made us in love and formed us in love and breathed the breath of love, God himself, into our hearts. And again, we became born again, born again of love, which is awesome. And thirdly, love came to rescue us from sin. Amen. God is love. Yes. God so loved the world that he gave. We stand before God now as new believers in love. So we are made for love, by love, for the purpose of bringing forth into the world a standard of love and lifestyle that only God could bring in our hearts. Yes. Amen. Amen. So love came to us and to where sin was. He restored us. He removed the curse he said, it is finished. Every debt has been paid. And the children of God are then placed into love. When God looks at you, he doesn't look at your faults. He looks at you. Oh, aren't they cute? Let's teach them how to walk. He doesn't look at us through judgment like religion would teach us. Or like the Old Testament. I love the Old Testament. But if you just read that alone, you're going to get the idea. God's kind of crabby. <clears throat> and he's not crabby. No. He just realizes that there's not a human being that can make it without having his son yes. in their heart. Yes. And so what he has to do is he has to deal with the flesh of man. Yes. Now, I don't know about you, but if those of you that had children who know when you draw a line, he says, now, you don't cross that line. You know what kind of can happen. Yes. Well, that's exactly what happened in the Old Testament. God says, this is what I demand. This is what I desire. But every time they tried to live up to it, they would brag about what they accomplished and they would put others down. 
And the Bible doesn't want us carrying that over into the New Testament. Say amen, somebody. All right, so in a, our relationship, there's two partners. There's God's part and our part. Now, which part do we do? And which part does he do? Well, he's done everything that we need to walk successfully in this earth. He's provided us a place where we can go. We can pray. Satan can't go. He's provided us a walk that we're in Christ. Yes. Hidden in Christ, in God. We're in heavenly places. Go ahead. So therefore, by our spirit man, this is who we are. It's called positional truth in Christ. I know it's a real religious term. But it's who you really are in Christ. But you and I are sense rule beings. We have flesh. Flesh, another word for flesh, is ruled by the senses. Everyone say ruled by the senses. Ruled by the you see, you have taste, yes. you have touch, you have smell, you have hearing, and you have sight. Those particular things are called a gate. Everyone say gate. Gate. So your eyes are like a gate. What they are on, we either open up and receive or we reject. Our ears are a gate. Opens up and we can hear and listen or we could shut our ears off. So all of the ways in which a human being walks without God is all flesh ruled or sense ruled. We are ruled from our senses. Now you've heard me teach this many times. That when God created us in his image after his likeness, we were clothed in light. God is light. In him is no darkness at all. So we were clothed with a light. So there was no evil at all. But when man fell, he fell from that light being into a sensual or sense ruled being. Where he analyzes everything by his senses. And that's the realm where Satan works. Amen. Hello. Now, we don't throw our senses away. Our smell is good. You know, our eyesight is good. You know, when we have it filtered. But being ruled just by our senses is disastrous. He that's in the flesh, Romans 8 says, cannot please God. Okay? But you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so, that Jesus Christ is in your heart. All right, go with me to Ephesians chapter 2. The walk with Christ is a walk of love. If God is love and we were made in love, then to walk anything else other than to walk God's love would to be fall short yes. and operate far less than what God has purposed and planned for you and I. Ephesians 2 verse 4 says, But God who is rich in mercy, aren't you glad? Because of his great love wherewith he loved us, even... When we were dead in trespasses and sins, <coughs> excuse me, made us alive together with Christ. Right. Say, I'm alive. I'm alive. In the spirit realm, I'm alive. In the flesh, I'm dead. Yes. Amen. Amen. The Bible says, crucify your flesh. Consider yourself dead in Christ, but alive unto God. Can you say amen? Romans amen. 6. But it says, and made us alive together with Christ by grace, God's unmerited favor, you have been saved. And raised us up. Now listen, we've been raised up. Raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Jesus Christ. Amen. So, Wow. In the physical realm, we're sitting here at CCM, but in the spiritual realm, we're in the spirit and the heavenly realm, but we're also seated with Christ. In other words, we already won. Yes. Christ won, we're in Christ. So we won in Christ. Can you say amen? Outside of Christ, you have to convince the enemy. Yes. Inside of Christ, you just release Jesus Christ. Amen. And Jesus will go collect and pound on what's at adverse to you. Yes. When we were so sick, we knew that God has the light at the end of the tunnel. Amen. We knew that God would never leave us nor forsake us. We knew that God was holding us and hugging us. And yet I could hear God's voice saying, you'll get through this. This too will pass. 
But see, because we're sensual creatures, we're creatures that are sometimes ruled by our senses. What we feel, hear, and see at the moment sometimes can override what we know in our heart. Yes. That's why we're to be consultants of the word. That's why we're to be praying together and lifting one another up. Why? Because God formed us in love. He made us in love. He did it for love's reason. And so that you and I could display God's love yes. every day in our life. Amen. Now, do you remember the phrase when Jesus said to his disciples, the prince of this world comes but can find nothing in me. Here's what he was saying. Satan needs selfishness. Yes. He needs fleshiness. He needs a person to be thinking not of God, but of themselves or maybe other things yes. so that he can tempt them. But as long as we're caught up in the things of God and we let God teach us how to master the love walk, the walk with God, Satan can't touch that realm. Every one of Satan's plans crumbles before love. Every one of his suggestions won't penetrate into your brain or into your mind because of love. Because you won't let it. It doesn't match up with your loving God who lives in you. And the Bible said even David quoted, you shall not touch God's anointed and do God's prophets no harm. So Satan gets in trouble every time he tries to mess with you. And if we retreat into love Amen. and project love, it destroys every work, every suggestion, and every plan of the devil. Mm -hmm. So we see things that are stirred up here and things not working quite right there and things working there. But you and I say, Lord, you've got this. Amen. You're guiding my steps. You're dwelling in my heart. Lord, you've not sent me out. You said we're going to go to the other side. Yeah. Lord, I believe your word. You said to the even to the enemy, man should not live by bread alone. Yeah. But every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Yeah. Amen. And so you and I, by the help of the Holy Spirit, let God line out our life in love. Can you say amen? couple of points. Number one, God so loved the world that he what? Gave. gave. Love gives. Yeah. Love does not take. Yeah. It's not a taker. Because you know that if you act in love, you speak in love, you think in love, love is always rewarded because love is of God and everyone that loves born of God and knoweth God. All right. The word love there is agape. All right, so what are you going to do, Pastor Kerry, like in Luke 6, and Matthew, and 5? It says, love your enemies. Man, I want to punch them. Your enemy is not the devil there. It's people who are, don't know God, and they misrepresent life. So they could be adversity to you. So instead of cursing them and engaging in it, calling them names, doing any of that kind of stuff, God forbid, you learn to love them. Jesus says, love your enemies. But he uses the word agape. Love your enemies with the power of the love I put in your hearts. Now, he said that to his disciples before they were born again. He says, if any man persecute you, love them. Amen. Somebody uses you, love them. Now, I'm sure the disciples are scratching their head and saying, with what? My love? I want to punch them. You see? But Jesus was talking about a time where we would be changed and that he would come and he would live in our heart. God would come and resident himself in our heart. So even if somebody does something mean, we know it's God's business. We don't take it upon ourselves, And the scripture for that is, vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. I will repay. Yes. Vengeance is not yours. So if somebody does you mean, you love them. Yes. Pray for them. Show God that they need to be saved. That's why they're so miserable. People are miserable because their life is full of misery and they don't know how to relate to God. They need to see examples in our heart, how we love God. Well, yes, we're, we're human. We make mistakes. Mm -hmm. We don't do things all that right. But we know whence cometh our help. 
We know who takes care of our need because he's God and he lives in us. Amen. So for many Christians today, they're working really hard. They're, they're fighting really hard to maintain a good walk and not to compromise. But if you listen to the way I said that, they got in reverse. First of all, you surrender on a daily basis so that God's power in you continues to work, order your steps, and keep you guarded and protected. Can you say amen? amen. Bible says to be anxious for nothing, but in all things through prayer, supplication, with thanksgiving, make your request known unto God, and the peace of God, which passes understanding, will guard your heart and mind. In Christ Jesus, Isaiah 26, 3 says he will keep you in perfect peace yes. when your mind is focused on him. Go ahead. See, that's me. that's me. So God so loved the world that he gave. Why? So that we can have that love abiding in our hearts too. So only by our human spirit can we follow love. Go ahead. We can't follow love through our flesh. We can't follow love through our envy. We have to follow love through our born-again human spirit. Yes. And so God doesn't dwell in your head. You have his word that you bring into your head. God dwells in your spirit, man. Amen. Remember what Jesus said at the woman at the well? He says, there will come a day where men will neither worship God in Jerusalem nor in these hills. But our father is a spirit and those that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Amen. And the only way you and I can worship him in spirit is not here, not in our head, but out of our spirit like a child. Yes. Out of the simplicity. Yes. God told me he loved me. He told me he'd never leave me. And that settles it. Right. And because of that hope that's in me, yes. it motivates me to, to help to care for others, yes. to love one another, to pray, instead of to criticize and see fault. <clears throat> Amen. Now remember what Jesus did to his disciples. He laid a lot of heavies on them. He says, don't judge. Mm -hmm. And yet mankind's full of judgment. He says, don't consider the moat or the speck in your brother's eye when you got a big two by four strapped to your head. <laughs> I used to, I did an illustration years ago. I mean, it's a long time before there were cars. And I tied a board just momentarily, just put it on my forehead. He says, now you're sitting next to people, right? You got this board over here, you know, and then all of a sudden you turn to look at somebody's fault and you hit four or five people with your two by four. And that's exactly what happens. The idea is our job is to love God and to allow him to help us please him and to love others yes. as Christ has loved us. Yes. That's it. Yes. It's not anything more than that. And then in that love of God directs your steps like to give food or to help the needy or to preach the word or to help within a local body. These are the things that God has placed in your heart. These are the assignments, the race that you have to run. But he's never going to let you run it alone. You're never going to be running anything alone. In fact, the more you learn to surrender every day yes. and depend upon God's way and his strength in you Amen. is the greater that you'll rise above the adversities of Satan's lies and his system. How many know that this world system is failing? Yes. So love not the world for the world is passing away, right? And the lust thereof. But he that does the will of God abides for ever. Say, that's me. Yes, that's Point at somebody. If you're married to him, say, that's you. <clears throat> All right. <laughs> Amen. <coughs> Thirdly, there are four different kinds of love. Who can remember those four loves? Eros, er Storge, Phileos, and Agape. which one describes God? Agape, unconditional love that never changes. Yes. Had a guy say to me, well, of course, he was an Old Testament trained person. He says, God.
God's love is not unconditional because if, if you keep my commandments, then my father will love you and I will love you. See, you have to, you have to keep his commandments. But see, he's in the Old Testament. The only way we can keep a commandment is to surrender to the one who kept them. Yes. Amen. You and I, when we surrender to Jesus, has already fulfilled the law. Christ already fulfilled the law. He didn't get rid of the law because the law is still there and he rhymed people and he can't save themselves. But he fulfilled the law so and then turned right on and gave his grace and says, look, I'm going to help you do everything you can do to live a good life, a full life. I have come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. The thief comes to kill, steal, and destroy. There's your dividing line. Every good and perfect gift comes down from the Father of life who does not change nor alter his love towards you. I imagine Job going through all that he went through didn't realize that God on the in part, once he realized that he was operating in his own understanding and in fear, once he realized that he was making a mistake and asked God to help him, Job received twice as much. He was benefited by twice as much. Sometimes when we're in a trial or situations, what happen? If we got our eyes on Jesus, we go through it quicker. Yes. Amen. As long as they're in the world, there's tribulation, folks. Yes. Listen to what Jesus says. It rains on the just and the so stay in the umbrella of grace. Can you say amen? So if you find yourself getting really wet and getting under things, then you know that you're operating too much and not surrendered enough. So all you do is go to God and say, Lord, looks like I'm taking matters into my hand again and I'm trying to do things for you and all that kind of stuff. So really have a talk with me, God, and make, make sure that inside me you make those adjustments. I say that to him almost every day. Because there's a part of me that gets real motivated. I've gone through certain habits and certain things, and I know what to do and those kind of things, but I'd rather do them in God and do them in God's timing than to launch out on my own just because I know what to do. Because sometimes even knowing what to do can't be done without God's help. Amen. Fourthly, the word agape is God's divine love that never changes. We receive it, it operates in our heart, for it is God who works in us to do his good and his perfect will of God. Amen. He that's begun a good work in you, Philippians 1, 6, will complete it on the day of our salvation. Now drop down in Ephesians chapter 3, please. Look at verse 17 through 21. All right. Remember, our flesh is a sensual being. Yes. So we have to put our flesh on the altar. Otherwise, it's going to want, 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 want. Gimme, gimme, gimme. It's me, 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 me. I'm my own best friend. <laughs> That's what happens. Cain and Abel never changes. Cain wanted to prove Abel he was wrong and religious. So he brought his own works before God, which was rejected because his motives were evil. All right, Ephesians 3, 17. <clears throat> that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you, being rooted and grounded in love. Yes. You see, God's disciples knew that anything outside of love was error, was sin. So here Jesus is teaching him all what love does. And there, here's love sitting in front of him. His name is Jesus Christ. Amen. And as an example, shows them how to walk, how to talk. And yet they're grasping for the meaning and the purpose of it. So Jesus had to teach him that you have to wait for the promise of the father, which saith he, I will send. He will be a comforter to you. I shall not leave you orphans. I will come to you Amen. yet a little while and you won't see me. Amen. And then shall you see me because I go to be with the Father. 
And because Jesus went to the Father, he sent the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit can do, have a relationship about God with you, every one of you. If half the world was saved, God could be with you all day long and still be plenty enough him to go around to do that for everybody. The problem is, are we surrendered enough to allow him to do that? Are we in love with him enough to say, God, saturate me, baptize me in your love. So, Lord, when I respond to others, I, I love them and I care for them and they can sense God in me. Lord, help me not to react to life situations because many of it are just deceptions, distractions. So, Father, help me to respond with your help to life and run the race set before me, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of my faith. All right, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, rooted and grounded in love. You may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the width, the depth, the length, and the height. And to know, and to know, the word know there is know by experience. The word know, there's gnosis, there's nos. There's different words for knowing. One means to know by reading. The other is to know by experiencing it. Hello. How many know you can get out of Bible college and you can be told what to do, but it isn't until you are in midst with all the people that your experiences begin to give you the 3D picture of how to do it, when to do it, and the motive behind doing it. Amen. And to know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge. Woo. That you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Say, that's me. Amen. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask or think. According to the power that works in us. You see, you got love working in you. You got love boiling on in the inside of you. And it will only come out if you let it. God is a gentleman. He'll stay and operate in you and work in you until you let him out. Remember when you face the enemy, let God handle it. Yes. Let God out. Yes. So it's, it's like this. Marvin has a car. He wants to take me to the store. So I go out, meet with Marvin, and I get in the automobile. And then he drives me to the store. Can you say amen? If I want to have a victorious day, I get and I meet with God. I lay my flesh on the altar. God fills me. God blesses me. We com commune together. And then he zaps that old carpet called the flesh. And I'm able to pick it back up and it will serve my spirit. Yes. After spending time with God. Now, if you don't have a... a a habit of prayer, you don't meet with God on a regular basis, then you're going to have extra amount of struggles because the Bible says we have trouble in the flesh. It's when a husband and wife get divorced and then they're forgiven and everything and then they find someone they love and get remarried. It says God will forgive their sin, but they will have trouble in the flesh. Why? Because we deal with memories we deal with past hurts. Oftentimes, in a previous uh, marriage, we bring our problems into the new marriage. See, that's just the old flesh. You see, we can cure all of that by meeting with God first thing and letting God adjust us, Amen. zap our flesh, get everything adjusted. Then when you get up and you enter your day, are you entering in the spirit or are you entering in? The flesh. You're entering in the spirit. Amen. Amen. And the Bible says, walk in the spirit and you will not fulfill the lust of the, lust of the flesh. Galatians 5 verse 16. For the flesh wars against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh so that you cannot do the things that you wish. Sounds like Romans 7, doesn't it? Now Paul's life. He says, but if you be led by the spirit, you're not underneath that law. What is that law? It's in Romans 8, 2. The law of sin and death. Christ Jesus has set me free and set you free from the law of sin and death. Amen. So.
Can you say amen? amen? All right. So it says further on. Now to him is able to do exceedingly abundantly above anything you can think or ask. Mm -hmm. Still start thinking and asking. Amen. Are you satisfied with your walk right now? And don't, you know, shake your head and let that double know. Of course, there are things that you love and are content with with God. But there's a lot more to gain. And he's the one that sees that you get it. Can you say amen? Because okay. God adds prosperity to his servants and no sorrow with it. Amen. So when he blesses you, there's no guilt. Right. There's no sorrow. There's no feeling neglected. Mm -hmm. Because everything he does is perfect concerning you. Amen. Are you with me? Yes. So it is God in us, God's love in us, that does the work every day. Love is working in us to do the will of the Father. That's why we submit to him. And then finally, we are to master the love walk. And the only way we can do it is with God's help. Can you say amen? Yes, go ahead. Amen. All right. And in order to that, we must surrender daily to God and let God's love prevail. All right. Go with me to Ephesians chapter 5, please. Love destroys every tactic the enemy can throw at us. God's love in you destroys every tactic. Why? Because God's love can tell you what the motives are. Can tell you what the intent is. Can show you the result. A lot of times some people ask questions but they don't think about the end result of what they ask. A lot of times we do that in our flesh but we from our spirit trust God say amen. amen Ephesians 5 verse 1 and 2 listen therefore be imitators of God as dear children and walk in love the Greek word for walk there means to beat a trail of love amen. to make your own trail of love yes. don't go back into the patterns of your old family life stay fresh stay in love say amen Walk in love as Christ also loved us and given himself for us as an offering, a sacrifice to God his Father as a sweet smelling aroma. Amen. Down to 1 John chapter 4 verse 7 through 11. Listen carefully. Beloved, let us love one another. Now we're talking about agape love. Let us love with God's power, his love. Let us love one another for love is of God. And everyone who loves, agape loves, is born of God yes. and knows God. He who does not love like God does not know God. For God is love. Amen. In this, that is this love, the love of God, it was manifested toward us that God has sent his only begotten son yes. into the world that we might live, now listen, through him. You see, when you pray and you get up in the morning, you're living through Christ. Amen. You reach through Christ. Christ reaches through you. It's called a mystery of godliness. Amen. Amen. And when you say, Father, in Jesus' name, remember you're silhouetted by God. Suddenly you disappear in Satan's eyes and Jesus appears. Now, you, you got to get a picture of this. That's exactly what happens. Father, in Jesus' name. Now, the next things you say will either let you pass through any adversity of the enemy and walk with God, or will flag the enemy and say, it's really I using the name of God. Let me tell you something. Is God intimidated by you and I? But he's intimidated who lives in us. Amen. Jesus kicked the booty out of him. Yeah. And will continue to do it. If you bring him forth in the fight. <clears throat> you see having what we went through. Wasn't our fight. We didn't sin that we got sick. <laughs> who did sin Jesus? That we did get COVID. Our flesh wants to be sick all the time. Our flesh wants to fear. Our flesh wants to do this. And oftentimes catches things 
that we have to believe God for to change. Can you say amen? Doesn't make us any less or any more than anybody else. So it goes on, beloved, let us love one another for everyone who loves agape is born of God. That God has sent his only begotten son into this world that we might live through him. Now verse 10 says, in this is love. Yes. Not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be a perpetuation for our sins. Anybody here not know what perpetuation means? Means of escape. We were sinners. Now through Christ, he's given us the way, the truth, and the life. So he's a perpetuation, a means where you and I accept him, and he's our ticket out of here. Can you say amen? We follow our shepherd, and he leads us out. Yes. Out of what? Sin this world, this life, and into eternity. So we need to follow the shepherd. We need to be very good at following the shepherd. And the way to do that is get saturated in love first thing every day. Are you with me? All right. So he says, in this, the love of God was manifest toward us that God has sent his only begotten son into the world. Then he says, beloved, if God so loved us, we ought to so love one another. Amen. Amen. Sounds great. Thank you, God. A couple of points. Number one, we are to walk in God with Christ. In, this is the most powerful walk that anyone could have. That walk with God in Christ. Say amen. amen. To walk in love, to sit down in Christ and let love God Lead you throughout your day. Hello. The Bible says there's rewards that we gather throughout the day. And those rewards are based upon the love of God towards others. Second of all, love here is agape, God's love. So we don't love others with our love. Because Jesus said this. What reward do you have if you give to those that love you? What reward do you have if you just love those who will love you? Love your enemies. Love those who despise you. Be good to those who persecute you. And so shall your rewards be great. Why? Because God's love surpassed all of our fallen nature, reached into our heart, and pulls us out of ourselves. Can you say amen? amen? Love does not consider the mess of men. It considers the answer God for man. Yeah. All right. And thirdly, so God sent his son into the world that he and we might live through him. <clears throat> so it's very important. Love your enemies. Yes. First John four, again, 17 through 19 says love has been perfected amongst us. We spend time with love, don't we? In that we have boldness in the day of judgment. Now let me ask you. Let's see, you, see how much you know. For a Christian that's born again, we have a different judgment seat than those that are not born again or the devil or the false prophet. There's one called the judgment seat of Christ where we receive rewards because we're born again and it's what we allow God in us to do. And then there's a great white throne judgment for those that reject God and refuse God. Yes. But the one of the day of judgment we may have boldness is if we walk in love, then we know we could stand before God because love is God and God is love. Amen. You can't separate the two. And if we come before God in love, we can have boldness knowing that as he is, the scripture says, so are we in this world. So let me read it to you. It says, love has been perfected among us in this, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment. Because as he is, so are we in this world. So from your spirit man, your soulish man, 
you're like Christ. From your flesh man, you aren't. So you lay your flesh on the altar as a living sacrifice and let God crucify it daily. Jesus said to his disciples, listen, if you really choose to come where I'm going, let him first deny himself. Take up his death, his cross, and follow me. For he that would love his life will lose it. But he that loves to lose his life for my sake will have life and have it more abundant. Yes. So what he's really saying, if you choose to live your life from your flesh in rebellion towards God, even though you think you're doing good, you'll find out that your life will become a one big disaster. That's why a lot of us are born again, because we decided that we were headed the wrong way. Then when we surrendered, we continue to stay surrendered and let God drive our car. Good. Let God drive your life. Yes. I hate the word drive. Let's, let God steer your life. Let him tell you when to break and when to accelerate. Let him tell him what to avoid and what not. Mm -hmm. What to be a part of and what not to waste your time in. Lay aside every weight and sin Good. that does so easily beset us. And let us run with patience the race set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Yeah. It says, for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame and the, the sinners of being against him, and has sat down at the right hand of the Father on high. Amen. And you and I are seated with him if you have Jesus Christ in your heart. Yes. You are covered in love. Make it your goal to walk in God's love with God's help. Amen. A couple of points. We love him because he first loved us. Amen. Amen. So a couple of points. When we walk with Christ in God, we destroy every work of darkness. Amen. The key is to continue on walking in Christ, not stopping, looking around, being distracted, trying to make your life better. You know, I'll have to pay Peter to borrow from Peter, pay Paul. Okay. Not being distracted by the world system. Don't take matters into your own hands, but allow everyone to see it is God's love in your heart that controls your actions and your words. Say amen. Second of all, we have boldness because we walk in Christ. We get up, meet with God, we walk in Christ, we can have boldness. So you're not always looking over your shoulder or wondering who's going to see you doing something, you know, all that crazy stuff. So we can have boldness before God. Why? Because God dwells in you and I. And thirdly, we run our race, not other people's races. We run our walk with God and we run it in love. And through God's help and through Christ, we become more than conquerors. Amen. Amen. Every situation the enemy throws at you, James said, count it all joy. Yeah. Let patience have her perfect work. Or to take the Hebrew out of that, let Jesus in you have his perfect work. Amen. Amen. Finally, the last scripture I have for you. I think it's the last. I want to double check. Nope. We've got a couple more. Romans 8 says, verse 31, listen. What shall we say to these things? All the adversity that comes our way. If God is for us, who could be against us? Amen. He who did not spare his only begotten son, but delivered him up for us all. How shall he not with Jesus also freely give us all things. Amen. Amen. So you walk with Jesus, God's going to bless you. Yes. He's going to bless you. He's going to bless you. Walk with Jesus, going to bless you. Amen. But you want to be important. No, surrender, walk with Jesus, because God will promote you. Amen. I'd rather be promoted by God than try to promote myself, say, oh me. All right, so let's go on. Who shall bring a charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is he that condemns? Well, it's the devil. It is Christ who died and furthermore is also risen. Who is even at the right hand of God who makes intercession for us. 
Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Now listen. Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, as a preacher, we are killed all the day long. Paul said, look, we are killed for the fact that you can live. I am being persecuted because I want to give you what you need and sound doctrine so that your lives can become successful. And he says, so the enemy pounds on me to keep me. And he says this, and he says, he says, for your sake, we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Yet, Amen. in all these things, we are more than conquerors. Amen. Amen. Through him who loved us, yes. who lives in us, God, yes. whose love, God, what never, never stops existing is yes. God and God's love. Yes. Now abideth faith, hope, and charity. The greatest of these is charity, God's love in action because it's God working through you. Yes. Amen. For I am neither persuaded that neither death, life, COVID, angels, <laughs> nor principalities or powers, nor things present, nor things to come, height or depth, or any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God that's in Christ Jesus. That's you. You are set. Yes. Amen. We meet with the one who directs our life we get saturated by the one who directs our life. He guides our step by the one who directs our love and our life. And he's the motive, the love that causes us to do and say what we do. Say amen. And finally, love needs to be on display. We shall know we are Christians by our Love by our love. Yes, they'll know we are Christians by our love. Amen. So Philippians 2, 1 through 4 says, Therefore, if there is any consolation in Christ, any comfort of love, Amen. any fellowship of the Spirit, if any affliction or mercy, fulfill my joy by being like-minded. Yes. Having the same love, being of one accord and one mind. Let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit, but in lowliness of mind. Let each esteem others greater than themselves. Let each of you look out, not only for his own interests, but also for the interests of others. And that's what you do. Absolutely. Amen. So listen. Love thinks of themselves last. Love places respect on people. Two kinds of respect. The respect that is earned, which most people are aware of, and the respect that is given. If you're a mother, you deserve respect. If you're a father, you deserve respect. If you're a boss in a business, you deserve respect. Now, a lot of people just operate on what... They deserve others' respect by performance. You see, being that I'm called to be a pastor, respect that office. It's of God. Now me, I'm a human being. Respect me, because I'm 67 years old and still alive. You see, we have lost in our society respect for one another. But love will build that respect back. Yes. To have respect... Like, for example, Brian. I just love Brian. Sorry, Brian, you're on the tape. <laughs> but I respect his gifts. Yes. Amen. And Diana, same thing. Amen. Even though I don't know a lot about them, I see God working alive in them. Yes. And that's what I enjoy. That's why it's so neat. Oh, welcome. God's alive in you guys. And amen. love is moving and motivating us. Can you say amen? And then finishing. <sighs> 1 Corinthians 13, you know this one. Sorry about the still getting rid of this junk. Of course, I'm, what do they call it? Clean. COVID yeah, COVID-free, but still residuals of stuff, yeah. you know, working through. 
All right, listen to this. This is really good for us. This is 1 Corinthians 13. And if you get a chance, read it in the message or, uh, or there's a couple other translations that kind of bring out some stuff. Even the Living Bible does a good job. But listen to this. This is the New King James. Look what it says. Though I speak with tongues of men and angels, but have not love, agape love. Amen. I have become a sounding brass and a clanging cymbal. You ever notice people that walk in the sense realm, in the flesh realm, they're noisy, they're agitated. You ever notice that? You know, it's like being coarse. How many of you here know what smooth sandpaper is and coarse sandpaper? And that's why it says coarse jesting, being rough with people and not respecting them is forbidden. Because when we esteem others greater than ourselves, how, how dare we tear anybody down? You don't like the church up the street? Then we keep quiet and pray for them. Don't voice yourself and your opinion. When somebody voices their opinion, they're just simply saying, look at me. This is what I have to say about that. And immediately you shut the off button in a lot of people's hearing. They don't want to hear what you have to say with that kind of attitude. They want to see what you have to do because you are a Christian. You are supposedly Christ-like. Say amen. So even though I speak with tongues of men and angels, I appear spiritual. And have not love, I become a sounding brass and a, ch a clanging cymbal. In other words, God says you're just a bunch of noise. And though I have the gift of prophecy, ah, saith the Lord, and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith, so that I can even remove Mount St. Helens, I mean, a mountain, but have not love, I am nothing. Ooh, that's a harsh one. I am nothing. In other words, you don't register at all. So the best work you can do, but you did it to be noticed by man, you won't get a piece of credit for it. I'm giving my $10,000 to the church. Everybody, who can match that? You just lost your reward. The Bible says don't brag on yourself. Brag on God who lives in you. Yeah. All right. So, and it says, and though I understand all mysteries and I have all faith, I am nothing. Third, verse three, and though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned and have not love, it profits me nothing. Yeah. So here we have clanging gong. I am nothing. And I can't profit with anything. So I would say, if we don't do it in love, why do it at all? Just a thought. But he describes love and he says, I love it. Okay. And though I bestow all my gifts, in verse 4, love suffers long. In other words, it's patient with others. Especially if they don't do it right. Huh? Are you with me? Love suffers long and is kind. Love does not envy. Gosh, I wish I was like Pastor Kerry. <laughs> I have to use me, not you. <laughs> Love does not parade itself. It's not puffed up. Does not behave rudely. Yeah, I'm doing good. Why are you asking? Does not seek its own. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. See, not your own. It's not provoked. You see, somebody who walks in love doesn't get angry. Hello? Well, Jesus got angry. Yeah, but he didn't sin. Let me explain. Inside your spirit, who lives in your spirit? Can God sin? So if we follow God from our spirit, we live through Christ then it's going to lead us away from destruction and sin. Can you say amen? amen? The Bible says if we walk in love, the seed of God remains in us, and we don't continue to practice sin. In other words, what we used to do is suddenly leaving us, and our interests have changed to be with God. So if you're a Christian, and you're still thinking you're getting away with stuff, 
please stop because we don't want to have to come to your funeral or your destruction because you did not heed the voice of love. So I'm not referring to you as believers because you walk in love. But I'm referring to those who say they believe, but they hate their brother. They don't think anything about speaking evil of government authorities, people in authority. And see, what that does is this opens us up in the flesh to be a target. God wants us hidden in Christ in God so that Satan's arrows miss us every time. When we're accused, we're not guilty. I remember one time, just a quick story and then we'll finish. I used to be public enemy number one in the town of Buckley. I went to school in Buckley, graduated in White River High School. Now I'm mentioning these spots so if you want to get real googly, you can look it all up. But, but it used to be because I went to school with a rookie cop who later became the chief of police and knew that I didn't like him and he didn't like me. He kept that unforgiveness right into his becoming the chief and he used to follow me every time I came into town and tell people I'm public enemy number one. So I would come into town and they would radio, oh, he's in town. So they'd follow me all the way through to Union Claw and all this. And of course, one day I got saved. Gloriously saved. My sins were forgiven. My guilt was free. God cleansed me and washed me and made me a new creature in Christ Jesus. And I find myself driving through town and I look in the rearview mirror and there's the cop on me. And I'm looking back on Huh. I'm thinking about all the things that I could have done wrong, didn't do wrong. And suddenly God says, son, you're mine and you're forgiven. Yes. Doesn't matter if they pull you over, because if they do, you could just tell them about me. And suddenly I realized that God had removed the guilt, removed my selfish ambitions. And suddenly I was so glad just to be alive, to be with God. So that what I'm trying to tell you is sometimes we bring a little bit of the, the way we used to be into our present. But if we go to God on a regular basis daily and, and work, he works those things out. Pretty soon your past seems so far away, so far removed. Yes. And suddenly your hopes and your dreams are wrapped up in God and your family and living a good life before the Lord. God does all of that. We don't. We don't try one day to be good. No, we surrender one day to the good one. Amen. And the good shepherd then leads us yes. into the way to walk. All right, finishing. Love suffers long, it is kind, it's not envious. Love does not parade itself, it's not puffed up, does not behave brutally, does not seek its own, is not provoked, thinks no evil, hardly even notices when others do it wrong, and doesn't rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth. Bears all things, that means carries all things, to the Lord in prayer. Believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Now abideth faith, hope, and charity. The greatest of these is charity. Amen. So, I want to tell you what God told me during this time of recovery. He says, the time of my angelic host visiting the church, ch churches in the local areas has begun. You see, in 1980... My son was born in 79. I, in 80, Mount St. Helens blew. Remember? But before it blew, a week before it blew, we were visited by an angelic being that my whole congregation saw. Now, remember, I'm a young pastor, so I don't know about these things. I'm thinking, what? So, this lady, she was a female look, okay? Angels, remember, they can take any form that they want. Okay, now, so, so if you believe angels are only male, I think you need to have God show you. They can take any form that they want. It's always a good form. 
Anyway, this lady showed up, and the church was packed. It was a church about this side, but it was packed wall to wall. And the only way to get in is through one door and out through one door. And so I and two of my elders and my dad were standing outside greeting the people as they were coming in. We happened to notice this one very tall lady who clutched a Bible to her chest but had no purse. She walked in and we greeted her, made her feel welcome, and the only chair was open was right in the center of the congregation. And that day we were having communion. So I preached a good message, we had communion, and I noticed she did not take communion. I'm thinking, oh gosh, I hope I didn't offend her. And so then we did the benediction, which is the prayer at the end. God bless you, shine his face on you, and do all those things. And then we get ready to turn everybody loose. <coughs> so we all had our head bowed, our eyes closed. And remember, I had nothing to do with this. These are things that God wants to do and will do, start doing what God told me again. And he's doing it right now. All throughout the world, he's visiting. Okay. And, and so when we said amen and opened our eyes, her chair was empty. My dad was at the only door you can go in and out, and nobody went past her. My elders got up and said, where'd she go? I mean, it's like we knew everybody else. This lady's a, he's new. So find out. Completely gone. No trace of her anywhere. And God spoke up in our midst and said, I have sent angels amongst my people this day, and I am judging the hearts of the works of God to see whether they praise and glorify me or not. And man, after he said that, then it was a week later, the mountain blew and everything. So I can remember that precisely. And so we went and I asked around, the guy belonged to the Full Gospel Businessmen's Fellowship International out of Seattle chapter. So I asked around and there was 13 visitations that same day in 13 different churches all over the area. So let me read this to you, okay? That day is here. So we need to listen to this scripture. Let brotherly love continue. Do not forget to entertain strangers with that love, for by so doing, some have entertained unwilling, unknowingly entertained angels unawares. Now, I know and you know there are plenty of angels in our midst. You just can't see them. But once in a while, God will send a messenger that will spy out the land. Remember Abraham. How the angels and the Lord went to Abraham and said, Shall we not tell Abraham what we intend to do to Sodom and Gomorrah? So don't think that we live in a different time. We live in the greatest time. These are the end times. These are the times to really be focused in on God. Really maintain with God's self a walk of love. In so doing it, you'll find you will prosper in the midst of the world storm. If you got something out of this this morning, would you give the Lord praise? So the